Salam. Bima dada kum ila dalikum Sidi Ali Sulli Kareem, Khabib. Madad ya Sidi Asatani Ali Shaykh Muhammad Al-Faiz Al-Ghistani, Sayyid Shaykh Muhammad Al-Azmad Al-Haqqani. Mawlana Shaykh Shaykh Muhammad Al-Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Al-Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Al-Ghada, Muhammad Al-Khaliq Al-Khush Al-Tawani. Sahib Zaman Sayyid Muhammad Al-Mahdi Ali Sallam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa Ali Sallam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina Ali Sallam, Thumma Sayyidina Bakr Sadiq, Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman. Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Siddhat al-Fatima alayhi salam. Usairu sadatina wa siddhuqin al-Fatiha. Al-Shabadi wa Rasulullah kareem. Amin. Fa'awzu billahi min shaitan al-Radeem, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Atiyu Allah, atiyu Rasul Allah al-Anjim minkum. And always a reminder for myself and Abdul Qalaji Sadaifu, Miskeen, Uzal, and Jahad, and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence, alhamdulillah, inshaAllah. What do we have from our online people, our online families, questions, anything that the AI didn't answer inshaAllah. <laughs> inshaAllah everybody's getting a chance to test it out and to put some questions into it and inshaAllah the responses are, are nice and, and eloquent and if anything is lacking then just put a thumbs down and that'll flag it for everybody to go and review that uh, maybe it doesn't have access to a certain information and so they'll try to modify and fix it inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi thank you so much for this new AI bot. For all the questions we had asked on Help Me before, now alhamdulillah the Shaykh AI gave us the most direct, fastest and best answers for each of them and also the reference attached at the end for every answers. The articles and videos were SubhanAllah. Forgive me Sayyidi. MashaAllah, alhamdulillah, inshaAllah coming soon it'll be in the app and it'll be attached to the emails. So when they do email Help Me. Then it can integrate and answer the emails inshaAllah coming soon. Then face and voices where I'll be speaking Spanish and Russian and Chechen. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, uh, there are quite a few volunteers. To ask if they can get paid for their transcribing or their service. Also, someone is saying they have gained a lot of followers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. just by sharing and posting your videos. They're asking if they can advertise and capitalize on this account and make money off of it. <laughs> Where the, you have two questions. One, they want to get paid for transcribing, yeah. get paid from us for transcribing articles, then that's not khidmat, that, that's not a, a service anymore. That then just becomes a, a job and and the tariqah is more interested in employing people, yeah, everyone has to work outside. So that's, that's not the interest of the tariqah to become a, a massive employer and, and then keep trying to, to raise money just to pay the salaries of people. What's important is from the money that people make in the world that they dedicate a time and a portion of that to support and to help. And that's where the rahmah and the blessings lie. So we take away a greater portion of the blessings if we coming to do a service and want to be paid for it. And that, that opens up something you know a bit difficult 
So the tariqah is generally not interested in doing that and, and there's no need for it because you're talking about hundreds of people. I think your crew has uh, over 60 people transcribing and they, they have way too many people just trying to manage them. So there's not a shortage of people wanting to help, there's just uh, too many people and, and too much difficulty in trying to manage them. So we don't reach a point in which we want to pay people for the service that people are, are volunteering. And this is again the concept that when they come to the tariqah it's really about like a collective family. So in many cultures, in Middle Eastern cultures, let's say the father had five, six sons, they would all go and work and bring their money back so that to make the house successful, the family successful and strong. Not that every son just took their money and ran. So the tariqah operates on that principle that go out and work, make yourself strong and support the tariqah. Because imagine like we said before in other groups, if you look at our, our strength, other groups they don't have a strong central figure or a, a trained strong central figure, they don't raise any money. And as a result you don't see a website, you don't see a phone number even, you don't see a way to even contact the group, the, the organization. They definitely don't go out and produce or do anything because if there's no capital, there's no revenue coming in. And that's not the way that Prophet ran anything, he ran an entire government. He delivered the message of Allah built an enormous community, built a religion, built a government, built an entire financial structure. So the example in the sunnah of Prophet is to build something strong like a ship in concrete that will weather many difficulties. Not something frail and fragile that you know if ten dollars doesn't come in it collapses. So the tariqah is encouraging and that's why you see our style of teaching is to encourage people go out and work hard and for what you get, the fruits of what you get, how to multiply your fruits in life is that you give to the shaykhs, you give to the tariqah because then Allah increases the bounty of each individual person when he sees that what they make they give to their shaykh, to the tariqah, they give to their way, their belief, their practices and as a result that's what we call barakah. And that ni'mat and Divinely Grace dresses them because Allah sees their system is correct. Okay as much as I give this individual, he's giving his portion to the shaykh and it's not two percent, two percent are for regular people. So when somebody wants to give two percent, go to the regular mosque and sit there and you get your two percent worth. Absolutely nothing. So this is not a two percent group, this is a group in which they gave at least 10 to 20 percent of their life a khams and they lived and died in the way of Prophet in the time of Prophet Whatever bounty they took, 20 percent went to Prophet to establish their government, to establish everything. Now that's a bit steep for people because they don't have that level of faith. But definitely it's not thinking I gave like 2% which would be you know pennies on what people make, how could the tariqah ever become strong? And when they give in charity they fulfilled what Allah wanted from them. But when they give a gift to the shaykh that builds their relationship with the shaykh that they want to be somebody who supports the shaykh and takes care of the shaykh. So all of that is ba based on khidmat. And that's why then the tariqah and our group is very strong, mashaAllah very strong operating three different charities. We have a charity in US, charity in, in Canada, charity in Pakistan and a different type of organization in India. So this is the system that our shaykh trained us to build the strong entities, strong organizations and strong people that support it. So that you see all of the top technologies coming out, all of the web hosting coming out, all of the servers that host the app that you're enjoying for free. They're servers that are running them and they have a monthly course. The gentlemen whom are operating it and, and, and buying parts and pieces for it, they're putting it through the, the credit cards and the, the donations that are coming through. So all of this operation it doesn't sort of operate out of nowhere. It's through the generosity and the support of people 
and as a result of Prophet being happy with it, this is how the system works. If you do something that Sayyidina Muhammad is happy with, the apps, the books, the websites, the teaching, the three days a week of questions and answers and all of that, then as soon as you give in that direction Allah blesses it because He's happy with what they're doing. That's why if you, if you contribute towards something good, you share in its good. So now all our people are shareholders on an immense bounty. Every time you see something new and you are a shareholder you should feel good. It's like Apple coming out with a new product line, uh, uh, the AI guys coming out with new product lines, you are spiritual investors that we will take this all the way to our paradise. That Ya Rabbi when you sent us on this earth this is what we did, a collective group, myself, my shaykhs and all the students, we did this, not I or any one person. So this is a, a great honour that Allah gave to us, this honour that I will allow you to represent this reality. So anyone who contributes that's the source of why it's blessed, that's why they see so many openings. You know they go to buy something this opens, they go to do something this opens. Why? Because the support and the support they give goes towards all of these services to support their tariqah, to support the charities and then to support their shaykh. And anything that you make, anything you produce, anything you get you think, okay this portion of it definitely goes in the way of my, my faith. But now the reverse is come and say, now how I'm going to get something out of these guys? That's different, that's, that's not our way. You don't want to come and sell them something, I want to come and, and take some money from them and I don't want to not charge them. So that becomes, that, that becomes something else. You lose that barakah and that blessing. So we, we keep with the system in which Allah has inspired within us and there's so much desire, there's so many people wishing to serve and that's what we said is the opposite of what we asked last night is go out and do khidmat. You know now alhamdulillah Nigeria opening up, I think the gentleman who watches online he's watching with us. And they go out, they give and you see how difficult it is you know to go out and do this by yourself and then go motivate a couple guys that are next to you and say, why you don't just come and help me put this blue shirt on and you motivate one person, two person, three persons and then you see, well geez how the shaykh is motivating hundreds and not thousands of people to participate in all of this then you realize you have to have good character, loving character, you have to good good and clean mannerisms so that Allah pleased with you, Prophet pleased with you and those people will see blessings in their life. And then the good word spreads that you hang out with these people you get blessings and you train them to give, give their time, give their support, give from their abilities. It's nothing in comparison to what Prophet asked of his companions because they gave their lives. One day you may have to give your life. You should be prepared for that. The day of difficulty comes and you swear your allegiance to, to give your life to this way. But for right now give from what you love dearly of your time, of your wealth, of, of your acumen, your ability and look at mashaAllah what's being uh, produced. We're putting out more animes than I think uh, uh, Korea and Japan. <laughs> and they're all in sunnah, I don't think even the anime people ever envisioned the ridiculous anime outfits they have and ours, ours are mashallah Islamatized, you know all Muhammadiyun, big beards, oriental uh, images, it's beautiful because I think it will adapt to other people who will take these ideas and say, why we don't make an anime for Muslim countries? And you'll see them in sunnahs and in and, and Islamic outfits. So everything we do it has a, a direct effect for our students and then the knowledge of it trickles down to all the different channels because it's coming from a very high command. When that command comes out to our own people, they understood it, the echo of its isharat will reach everyone and you'll see the flavor of different things change. So alhamdulillah it's a, it's a great gift that Allah gave to us that Prophet gave to all of us to be of service in this time and in this day and in this age for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaamu Alaykum
Okay, can you please expand on Hakikata Tai al Lisan and how can we achieve this so we can increase to 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 salawats daily? Please forgive us. InshaAllah, the reality of, of movement. So, there's a reality of folding time and space, which is not available now, and the reality of an energy and a power that comes to the inner tongue or inner reality of somebody which is based on their meditation. So when they have their strong connection the grace and fayas, the words that we use uh, have to also be translated for people to understand is Divinely grace. When an energy comes to you through your connection. And when you don't have that energy or you think you even do have the energy then you want more of it. By connecting to spiritual people they have an abundance of overflowing energy with their spirituality. When you connect with them and connect with them what happens is an immense amount of energy begins to dress you, begins to dress you. That energy is needed for many spiritual practices. And as a result of just one of them is that as soon as you start to make your zikr with your heart, the speed of the dhikr in the qalb becomes much stronger. That it's not about Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli wa salli wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad by one, by one, by one. Those are specific to the awrad in which you have to do 300 to 500. So you'll be specific to the 300, 400, 500. There are then the awrads in which you just meditate, connect and you want to begin making salawats in their connection and in their presence. And you're going to use your tasbih because you can't control your tongue yet. Because when you khafi and you lock your tongue it's hard to go to the next zikr. So people whom practice it will understand. That how do you keep going to the next one when you lock your tongue and you're doing it silent. So your finger will take the place of a tongue because you start… because you're not looking, you're not moving, your tongue moving. You're going to lock your tongue so that nothing is moving and with your finger, you're going to put your finger. And when the tongue is in the lock position and they become faster and more fluent in its understanding, they're connecting, they're beginning to speed up their salawats. And they can begin to feel the energy of the salawats speeding, speeding until they can reach a point where they do, they do, they do, they can stop the tasbih and then the heart begins to do their salawats and to do the dhikr and to do their connection. That speed is very powerful speed. If they get into that hall their recitations become very fast, large amounts of recitations at a tremendous speed. That's then the, the reality of that tie because it's beyond space and time. They're using now their soul's power. But many things will open in the meditation. That's why it's so important to do the muraqabah, do the connection, make the connection with the shaykh. As soon as you begin to make the connection with the shaykh and do all the zikrs, do all the practices, Allah opens many realities for the servant. That everybody has seven names and seven realities all around them. Those realities can be present with the servant and begin to assist them in all of their zikr and all their practices. So many things happen in the world of light that can't be understood and if you talk about too much people get confused. But you want to open up the door to the world of light and as a result of the world of light immense energies, immense realities and requires patience and perseverance. So. When you start to open that reality you don't keep complaining about energy, this bothers me, this hurt me, this aggravate me, it's a world of light. You know take the good, the, the bad and the ugly all in the same package. So open up the light, can you keep your connection, don't be scared, don't be agitated, that which is uncomfortable pass through it 
and keep moving in that world of light, keep making the connection in that world of light and, and all this kingdom is uh, astonishing. When we talk about the seven realities you literally have seven of your realities all around you. And if they begin to make their zikr, their practices and start to send that onto you then that's a tremendous amount of energy. They do that anyways but the servant isn't allowed to feel that until they elevate and begin to energize themselves more and more. And at the time that it's necessary each of their realities comes to support them. There's a reality in which supports them in their dhikr and the, the name of that reality has to do with the dhikr of Allah that dressed upon that soul. They have a reality that is uh, for their spiritual battling and based on that reality comes to teach them how Allah has given to them to spiritually battle. So every level has a reality and Allah has created that entity for that reality. We need the support of our own self and that's what who knows themselves they will know their lords, they'll know the authority in which governs them. But unfortunately we're all run by the demonic lord. Until we break the chain of the demons then we can't even understand what are the heavenly lords because Allah gave your realities to govern you, they're an authority over you. The dhikr that you're supposed to recite in your life, that entity or that being of ours in the realm of that, that ocean of the law knows what zikrs and salawats and that's, that's the one that's doing that reality and that should come and support us in our dhikr. The one whom's supposed to teach us in our struggle and our fight will come to us and begin to teach us how to spiritually fight against negativity and darkness inshaAllah. So we are, we are, we are people whom alam al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan, Allah has completed the package. Allah is not reactive, always remember in our lives you put a post-it note and Allah is not reactive because bad character of people are reactive. Because they're always waiting for proof, you know that's all Qur'an says. As soon as you tell people difficulty coming, so where is it? Judgment day coming, bring it on. Because they're reactive, they want a proof for everything. Allah's not reactive, Allah's proactive, it's been written. So all our realities have been written, all of the realities within ourselves have been given. Alam al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan, that alama is that all knowledges have been given to you. And the only way you can achieve and reach them is go back to you, go back inside. But I said, I can't dig that hard, I can't dig that far because of all the shaitans then I need the madad of the shaykhs. So with the shaykh's light looking at me he can burn through these layers so that I can go inside. Because I have too many difficulties to go inside, there's too much calcification and and, and shaitan's blocking that way. So as soon as the shaykh appears in front of me their fires and their light begin to burn and which creates a portal for me to enter into myself. And with that light of the shaykh they begin to dress and I'm able to enter into myself and go deeper and deeper into these realities inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, are all souls interconnected? Can you please expand on the reality of souls having different darajats? It's ocean of light. For us to understand that if you kill one, you've killed them all that Allah give to us. That the reality of the soul is our understanding of like the internet. That uh, people are communicating through other people's computers because they're connected to a collective net or web. 
of devices. Our reality is that every soul is connected to souls. There's nothing disconnected from this web of souls because there's no soul that is independent but they're all dependent upon the web of souls. And all of their fires and energy comes from the universal soul. So they all came from the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad So you go to the AI and ask, what's insan a common? And then you get the book and you read it. So the collective energy is what we call Muhammadun Rasulullah insan common, the perfected creation. Means that's the universal soul, so from that soul every soul is created and from that soul all souls take their energy. And that Prophet Muhammadun Rasulullah takes from La ilaha illallah. So everything is connected and that's why we don't look down upon anything because Allah will return everything back to its origin. The badness that people do is their physicality but the soul is pure and purified and will always remain pure and purified no matter how much shaitan tries to darken the souls of people. All they can achieve is the darkening of a physicality. The soul is a light and returns back to Allah they say then what happens to bad people in the grave is that they don't damage the soul, they just never gave a light to it. They never illuminated and made the light to increase. But in the azab of the grave the soul will stand next to but the body will be punished and the nafs will be punished until the point of separation from how much the body and the nafs try to attach to the soul, the burning and the punishment until that attachment can be cleared. Then the difficulty of the soul in the grave that it didn't achieve an energy level that it should have. As a result it doesn't burn very bright. And then that soul's torment in the grave is it has to look at the difficulty of all its loved ones without the ability to intervene and to help. Still no paradise is locked, everything's still on this abode. So soul that did not blossom and improve itself, got rid of its punishment, next level of punishment is that it roams the earth looking at the difficulty of all its loved ones the torment of its children and all the loved ones it left behind, it didn't illuminate itself to have credit with Allah so it just watches them as a bystander in their difficulty and in their torment. That can be even worse than hell because you see the difficulty of your loved ones and you can't intervene. Proactive people they understand they're going in the grave and they want the most amount of power before they enter the grave. They do the most amount of good, the most amount of blessings and that's what we said in, in the Surah Munafiqeen during Rajab. That when a Salihin died and was about to be accounted by Allah the only reply that Allah is giving to us is that, Ya Rabbi before anything let me go back and give everything away everything I own away to become from your righteous servants. Why? Didn't say make my hajj, let me go back and make more salah but let me give everything away because of the, the station in which charitable acts and charity open to the reality of the soul. And what the soul understood of what it's going to need now in Allah's presence so this is an important reality for souls, people whom are proactive they build their souls, they do a lot of activity and, and they motivate a lot of people so that their souls become heavy with lights and blessings. Why? So that when they enter the grave they actually begin working then because that's what they plan for. 
They didn't plan for dunya, they planned for their akhirah. And as a result they enter the grave, they shed the weight of their physicality and Allah now gives them all their authority and all their power. And that's why we visit maqams, that's why we, we follow holy people because they're invested in akhirah not dunya. So they're very powerful with their akhirah reality. As a result that's when they're very powerful and very active. You call upon them, you think upon them, they bless your life. They visit all their loved ones and that includes their family and their students. And they relieve them of difficulties by virtue of the credit Allah gave to them which is immense, immense. We said one hour tafakkur is like 70 years of worship, these people have uh, lifetimes, 5,000 lifetimes worth of barakah and blessings. And Allah describes them throughout, Salamun Hiya Hatta Mitna Al Fajr, the people of uh, Laylatul Qadr, they have a Qadr, their life is like a thousand months. Every Fajr is dressing them a thousand months, every Fajr dressing them a thousand months. So they have a lot of blessings in the grave and as a result they can move anywhere on this earth, they split, spread that blessing and that fires and that light. That's why the tariqahs are so powerful and they take and, and take many difficulties away from people because all those shaykhs support their representatives first, then support all the students and all the loved ones <clears throat> and their service is that. And that's why shaitans were trying to attack the graves of awliya because the shaitans want the earth filled with no blessings so that they could ruin and destroy the lives of people. So has many, many powerful realities and, and uh, Allah has given many, many realities to the soul, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Please forgive me for asking but does shaitan have a bridle on mukhlis and mahfuz and rijal? Is death the only way to get rid of this? Bridle of shaitan? <clears throat> shaitan is a bridle on everyone and Allah gave to him that you can go after whoever you want except my mukhlis. And as a result of not going after my mukhlis because whatever you do to them I will wash them because nobody's free from shaitan, nobody has free from the the desire of shaitan, the influence of shaitan. But the difference between the mukhlis and non-mukhlis is that Allah will wash them and clean them. And this is what we describe with the du'a of Sayyidina Nuh that, uh, what surah I think it's next month's surah in the full moon, Fata abwaab as sama ma yamun hamiran that when Sayyidina Nuh went to his Lord and said, now I have become overcome by shaitan and all his difficulties and he asked Allah open the gates of your heavens and pour upon me the waters of your rahmah and mercy, fata abwaab as sama So means these awliya they're continuously praying, the Ya Rabbi open the gates of your water and your blessings and rahmah and wash away the difficulties that shaitan put upon us because we live amongst them, we eat and drink amongst them and it's it's not like you can rid yourself of them, otherwise he would command everyone whom was pious that run to the mountains and Mecca and Medina and, and hide. But as a result they have to be amongst the people and amongst the, the trenches of devils and operate in the demonic kingdoms so that to be with people, save people, guide people. And as a result Allah washes them which annoys and angers shaitan. So they go after others. So alhamdulillah that the tariqah to raise ourselves under their nazar of awliya and the, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad so that one whom does much and many salawats is under continuous nazar of Prophet in which shaitan won't enter onto that gaze. So the one whom is under the gaze of Prophet is then burning away the shaitans trying to approach them. So it's like a Dracula movie, 
Prophet is the sunshine and the devils they operate in the shadows for the believer. So it's just like a Dracula movie when they're trying to attack you and the Draculas are waiting for the sun to go down. Means they're waiting for you to become heedless and move away from Prophet and they will attack. And the one who believes and keeps their love they try as much as possible to be in the sunshine and the light of Sayyidina Muhammad the root in their homes, the root in their heart, the root on their houses and on their businesses, their cars, everywhere is their salawat on Prophet to fight away all of the satanic influence inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa what is the reality of uh, Prophet Zulkarnain and Ajuj Majuj in the end days? Hmm? Prophet Zulkarnain and Ajuj Majuj in the end days. Again, the yeah, the internet. External scholars, <clears throat> they understand hadith like footnotes and Qur'an like short stories. But each story and each footnote has an entire volume of books written into it and its timing, its events much deeper than what people understand. When it comes to eschatology and the, the understanding of the last days they, they're mixing everything in as if it was like uh, minutes apart. This will happen, then this will happen, then this will happen. But you're talking about thousand years. The amount of time that in the time of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam's arrival and once he rules the earth and the arrival of Sayyidina Isa, his days will be like a thousand, means like a thousand years Sayyidina Isa will have a life on earth and become like a paradise. The timing of each of these events is completely different. Yajuj and Majuj is way after that, after the prophetic and the paradise reality of Sayyidina Isa salam, will come a day of ignorance again and that one who brought complete ignorance upon the earth and disbelief upon the earth. Then to rid the people of this disbelief Allah will release the Juj and Majuj to eat everyone. And then the whole stories of how those are taken and, and uh, they all uh, Juj and Majuj will will die there some of them are big some of them are tall some of them are tiny some have big ears have small it's a whole sort of group of characters that will fill the earth eat and drink and be everywhere but this is much later in this story because some of these external scholars are talking about this happening now and then saying that this is this group of people and this will open over here in this valley in this mountain they will open now but this nothing related to these days. These are the days of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam and the Dajjal and Antichrist, the one whom they call the Messiah and for one whom we've been told of a great deceit. And these are the events to be occupied with and the understanding of Juj and Majuj is from the race of people. If we want to just get a symbol of what is this? Juja Majuj type of people is the Chinese people that eat and drink everything. It's a characteristic of Juja Majuj, it's not the Juja Majuj, it's not the Gog and Magog. It's just to symbolize because people can't understand, oh what are you talking about? A, a, a people Allah will create they will eat and drink everything and say, yes just watch your social media and you see they eat and drink everything and they think it's a delicacy. And they even fought in some of their wars, same style. When they fought in the Korean War they basically gave them a, a fork 
He said, you know, eat and drink whatever you want, we're not giving you food supplies and rations and just you know, go and… and they literally went across the countryside and they ate and drank everything. So this was for understanding that this characteristic exists. But when Allah bring out the real ones then that's something much more horrific that will eat and drink and just decimate anywhere they move. And that's much after the kingdom of Sayyidina Isa being on earth that when he makes earth like a paradise inshaAllah. And they said they don't know how many years that would be but it would be a long time from the advent of Zhuzha Majuzha, Gaga Magog inshaAllah. Subhan rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs. Our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.